Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. I'm, I'm totally shocked. I, I can't believe, and especially not here in this part of town. One man is in jail today, accused of murdering another person in Fergus Falls late last night. Thank you for joining us. Police were called to a home on Main Street near 19th Avenue in Fergus Falls about 10.30 last night. A man was dead, and police call it a violent death. They say the suspect fled the scene but was caught a short time later in his vehicle. Formal charges have not been filed yet. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop has been covering the story all day and has the latest. Fergus Falls Police say both the suspect and the victim are male. They are not releasing the names at this time. They say that there was another person at the scene when the murder did happen. Officers at the scene were able to uh, speak with um, people that were at the scene and were able to get information okay. and were able to identify the suspect and, and the suspect vehicle. Police wouldn't say if the suspect and victim knew each other, but added the suspect who is in custody will face murder charges. When we arrived on scene, investigators were loading up a van. They were going in and out of the house and garage. I don't believe I've ever heard of any other trouble out here, and I've been here over 40 years now. Darlene delivers meals on wheels to the home next door where the murder happened. This is a nice area of Fergus Falls, and years ago this was the exclusive area of Fergus Falls. So, yeah, it's very shocking. Just before noon, a man on a motorcycle pulled up and was speaking with police. The man was visibly upset and even slumped over and covered his face with his hands. There was uh, no threat to the general public and we do believe that this was an isolated incident. Fergus Falls Police say more information on this murder will be released tomorrow. In Fergus Falls, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. And coming up tonight on Valley News Live at 6, we'll have more on how neighbors and the community are feeling. A woman found shot to death inside a Minnesota home is believed to be linked to the gunman who shot and killed a UCLA professor on Wednesday. Police say they went to the Brooklyn Park home at the request of Los Angeles police. They say a woman was found dead inside the home from an apparent gunshot wound. They say they were called for the welfare check because L.A. police believe the woman was part of a hit list created by Manak Sarkar. They indicated that this was related to the recent UCLA shooting. And they also indicated that the female that lived at this address in Brooklyn Park was on a hit list that they believe was created by the shooter in the UCLA incident. Police say they believe the woman was dead prior to Wednesday's murder-suicide. The details of her relationship with Sarkar are not known. L.A. police say Manak Sarkar shot and killed UCLA professor William Klug before taking his own life. They believe Sarkar thought Klug released intellectual property that harmed him. Music superstar Prince died from an overdose of painkillers. That's according to the medical examiner investigating the death of the 57-year-old rock icon. Ever since Prince, Prince passed away in late April, investigators have focused on whether opioids played a role in his death and who might have given them to him. NBC's Chris Pallone reports. It's been long suspected and now appears to be true. It was an overdose of painkillers which silenced one of music's biggest and most prolific stars. <laughs> Toxicology tests reveal that Prince died from an opioid overdose April 21st at his home near Minneapolis. In the days following his death, fans flooded Prince's Paisley Park studio to pay homage to him as police and the DEA executed a search warrant at the estate while investigating the singer's sudden death. It was reported at the time that paramedics gave Prince a shot of Narcan, an antidote to an opioid overdose. A search warrant revealed Prince saw a local doctor twice in April, the last visit a day before his death. And the attorney for a California drug treatment center said the clinic's head sent his son to meet with Prince the day he died, but he arrived at Paisley Park a few hours too late. One of the staff members started screaming. Andrew heard the screams and went to the elevator where he saw that Prince was unconscious. Friends have said Prince was known for living a clean, drug-free life, but some indicated he lived with constant hip pain after years of jumping around on stage and wearing high-heeled boots. Chris Pallone, NBC News, New York. 
Prince's official cause of death is listed on the medical examiner's report as fentanyl toxicity. toxicity. Fentanyl is a narcotic painkiller that's 100 times more powerful than morphine. Fargo police are asking for your help in locating this missing teenager. John McClendon Jr. was last seen wearing a black Adidas sweatsuit with white stripes, a black t-shirt and black shoes. He's 14 years old. If you have any information, you're asked to contact police. And police are looking for a man suspected of breaking into six East Grand Forks businesses. They discovered the burglaries Monday, and one store surveillance system caught the man in action. If you recognize this man or have any information, you're asked to call East Grand Forks police or your local law enforcement. People living in a Dilworth apartment building are back in their homes after an early morning fire. Dilworth Fire Department responded just after 9 o'clock this morning at the Tivoli Garden Condominiums. The small fire left at least one person without a place to live. Smoke made its way throughout the building. Fire crews on the scene credit neighbors for their quick thinking, which led to no injuries and the fire being contained before it could do more damage to the building. They said thank you for calling and they'd rather have you call in and not be something important than not call in it was. Me and another guy down the street here, we ran over. He had broke the bottom part of the window and we were yelling in there to see if anybody was in there or not. No one was in the apartment that caught fire. The cause of the blaze is still under investigation. What a gorgeous day. Almost perfect out there right now. Will it stay that way for the evening? Let's go to Hutch Johnson in First Weather. Hutch? Thanks so much, Andrea. As we head into the evening, our southern counties are under the risk for some severe thunderstorms. They're firing out in the western Dakotas. But for the vast majority of us, things are very quiet right now. A couple of severe storms align moving through the uh, northwest corner of South Dakota moving east and some storms firing in southwest North Dakota will be generally moving our way, but it'll be quite late before they have any chance of getting into our neck of the woods. The Devil's Lake Basin may have a few sprinkles or showers passing through. We're talking about Benson and Ramsey County up towards Towner County as well as Eddy and Foster counties. For Fargo, quiet this evening. 70s for most of it. After sunset, we'll dip down into the 60s. Our chance or threat of thunderstorms here in the Red River Valley comes overnight, but we're going to keep our eyes on the skies for that. Looks pretty quiet in Grand Forks with 60s and 70s for most of the evening. Lakes country quiet as well. A lot of details on where these storms are heading through the overnight and into your early hours on your Friday coming up here in a moment. Thank you, Hutch. North Dakota's corporate farming law is being challenged in federal court. The North Dakota Farm Bureau filed the lawsuit today. They contend the law is unconstitutional and discriminatory. Farm Bureau President Darrell Lease says farmers should be allowed to benefit from what he calls a corporate structure, just like most any other businesses on Main Street. Uh, Lease says the North Dakota law needs to go away. I, I think it's an out of date, antiquated law that you know we need to address that. You know, why should we be put at a disadvantage? Why should our farmers be put at a disadvantage in North Dakota compared to, you know, virtually every other state in the union? Lease says this lawsuit has nothing to do with Measure 1, which is on the state's June primary ballot. He says this suit has been in the works for a long time. North Dakota is one of nine states that prohibit or limit corporate farming. Minnesota and South Dakota are two of the others. It's not the typical squirrel or chipmunk that's raising eyebrows outside a South Fargo apartment complex. It's a peacock. A viewer sent us photos of a peacock outside of Flickertail Apartments across from the YMCA. We decided to check out if the colorful creature was still there. To our surprise, yes, he was. Never have heard of uh, peacocks roaming around, so this is a first. Wow. So colorful. Wow. That is amazing. Peacocks in Fargo. It's very weird. I definitely found it. Deputy Chief Joe Anderson with Fargo Police says they tried to capture a peacock last week at the Buena Vista trailer park, but after an unsuccessful attempt, they called the Red River Zoo, and they couldn't catch the bird either. Here's what we know. The peacock did not come from the zoo, and Fargo police are waiting to hear back from a wildlife rescue out of Grand Forks to help assist in catching the peacock. Police say the peacock isn't a public safety risk, and as pretty as they look, just leave it alone. They also add if they try to dart it, it they would kill it, which they don't want to do. 
Don't ruin the summer fun with a bad sunburn. The CDC says melanoma is on the rise, which is the deadliest form of skin cancer. Dermatologists say if you have five bad sunburns, it increases your risk for cancer dramatically. Even if you have no history of skin cancer in your family, health professionals say it's important to be checked yearly. Doing those monthly skin checks on your own and being really aware of any lesions that are changing, um, looking closely at things that are changing size, shape, color, um, some more alarming signs or lesions that are, you know, starting to itch or hurt or bleed, that type of a thing. Prevention is key, like wearing SPF clothing and sunscreen with an SPF of 30 or higher. Dermatologists add that sunscreen can expire, so look at your bottle before using it.